We found this Camaro RS sitting in a field for the last 20 years untouched, which has caused all the white paint to turn green from moss. But after completely soaking the paint in degreaser, this became one of the most satisfying pressure washing videos we've ever made. But RJ, do you think we could save it? I don't know how we're getting this out. Well, you heard him, but let's find out more about it. We drove all the way to Cincinnati for that. <laughs> this is a 1992 Camaro that's been sleeping for a really, really long time. I think that the owner said that it's been here for the last 14 years. The prior owner abandoned it after some legal issues, and uh, this is where it sat. And you could totally tell, because A, look at the clearance on the bumper. I was like, oh, that, that wheel's gotta be flat. Walked around to this side. The wheel's not flat. It's just underground. This is the rim. The rim is underground. So we have this much, these are big tires. We have this much tire underground right now. Brent. Did you see this side already? And you didn't tell me about this? You can't even tell what color it is. There's so much moss. Look at this crazy growth pattern too. It's like weird squiggle lines. If anyone knows what these little squiggle lines are, like I don't know if those are like mites or something that eat the moss off the car and that's the pattern that they make or what, but I've never seen this on a car. We've done a lot of mossy cars, but that's a first. Oh, oh boy. Uh, man, they always smell like this. I don't know why, but they always smell like this. You see these? Mike's gonna love these, dude. We can put it on a Scirocco or maybe his S4. All right, well, I guess it's time for us to figure out how we're gonna get this thing out of here. So while I was pulling out the winch, RJ had to get on the ground and connect a monkey ball underneath the car to be able to start pulling it out of its tomb. And check out how much moss is on this one mirror. It's completely taking over the car. We have to clean it. And as the Camaro got pulled out of its ditch for the first time, you can see the wheels also got completely eaten up by vines. But I wanna ask the question of the video, so leave your answers in the comments below. It's clear this thing is in super rough shape. Even after we clean it up, there's no guarantee it's not rusted and the engine will run. So do you think this is more of a parts car or should it be back on the road? Let me know what you think down below. All right, Mike. The rubbish. Yeah. You ready to see Joe Dirt's Camaro RS? I'm B6 excited. Camaro? I'm, I'm excited. I can see the corner of it. It looks terrible from here. <laughs> Ta-da! It looks great with the, with the green all on it, though. Do you like it? Rumpke? Is that the, is that the garbage company? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Rumpke Mountain Boys. Stop. Yeah, this may have been like a, you didn't pay us. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this thing's rough, bro. It's an RS car, yeah. but it has a lot of the stylings of the Z28. Yeah, like the yeah, yeah. Big, this... The big front lip and then the hood, obviously. So yeah. I don't know if they, you were able to buy an RS with that package, but... Possibly, like an M car today, you get like the M series cars or like, you know, instead of an Audi S4, you get an A4 S line, yeah, yeah, with yeah. all the pretty stuff on it. It might be something like that. Right, right. You know, all the guys that drive M340s? <laughs> the M340? Wait, hang on, how, how's it go? The M340. Every, this is crazy. I can't believe it's fully, everybody always takes these cars apart. All these old cars are always missing stuff. So the outside's like complete, complete. Check out the inside, Mike. You gotta use your muscle. Yeah, there you go. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is gnarly. How's it smell? It's, you know, bad, but not that bad. I see it, there's already, there's like a big old nest over there. We could keep these. <laughs> like you know, whoa, dude. dude <laughs> you're driving this baddie with the bam, USA bam, protective bam, glasses. Bam, bam, bam. Put them on. Dude, I, I can't do that. Put them on, like. <laughs> you could put them on. Oh, man. I don't need these gnarly, dude, they're gross. This is all gross. Very, very oh, gross. Oh, dude. What are those all right, ready? Oh, belt buckle? Down, 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 dude. Okay, I like that. <laughs> you riding a big Harley with dude. that on? Mm. What is this even for? It's got like springs on it? It's your new belt buckle, buddy. Okay, I guess it's belt <laughs> buckle, but like what was this actually meant for? Okay, like, whoever drove actually... this thing was freaking I know, they were, they rock and they roll, were dude. Sick. I think first plan of action is vacuum the outside of the car. Yeah, we'll get off all the big debris and then we'll start on the outside. It could be yours. It can. This Probably like highly good. likely not be my V6 automatic Camaro. So like RJ just said, we're gonna get all the debris off the car, vacuum it off, and we haven't even popped the hood yet. We know there's probably a good chance there's a lot in there, so we're gonna open that as well, check out the engine, and clean that off too.
So here we are under the hood of the Camaro. We had to open this up to clean some of this debris out of here. There's quite a lot, but this is a Camaro RS. It's got a 3.1 liter V6. Not the most impressive thing in the world. Obviously the SS or the IROC car had a you know big old V8 in it. Not even that big of a V8, a small block. But a lot of people swap these over, whether you do a LS motor or a 383 or something, which would be really cool. I wanna know what you would put in this car. I mean, it's still all dirty and I'm sure it's gonna come out great in a little bit, but this motor is something that probably would have to go. <laughs> Sadly, we don't have a key for this car, but uh, I'm gonna see if this motor's unlocked. If it is, we might have Ray come help us out to see if we could get this thing fired up, which would be pretty cool. Um, let me grab some tools and I'm gonna see if we could crank this guy over. So let's give it a shot here. Now this thing's been sitting for, what is it, years. Fred? Like 20 years, you said? Yeah, you said like 19. Jeez. That's, <laughs> okay. Good luck. It's a lot. Oh no. No, I don't, I don't think this one's gonna go. That was a lot of pressure. <laughs> no, <laughs> I do not think so. This one is uh. You not eat your breakfast? Okay, I did not have breakfast today, but that if I if I crank on that anymore, I'm either gonna blow this apart or blow the head of that apart. So, so this engine seized. This engine is definitely seized up. Um, but again, these are candidates for you know swaps. So, this 3.1 liter V6 that made like I don't even know. I think it's like 150 horsepower. It's somewhere in there. It did not make a lot of power. And uh, anybody who would want to fully restore one of these, this would not be their first choice per se. We gotta clean this all out of here. Get the vacuum. Kind of get some of the stuff out of the way so I could clean up the bay a little bit. Now with the engine bay vacuumed out, we're gonna start pressure washing off the car, but first degreasing everything with our new Purell All-Purpose Cleaner HD. That way we could safely start breaking up some of the organic material on the surface of the paint. And you'll see after 20 years how it washes away almost all of it, and then whatever's left over that's embedded into the paint, we'll use it again with our microfiber mitts and get the rest of it. And if you guys are in the market for an all-purpose cleaner that's safe on any surface, on your exterior or on your interior, the link is in the top of the description. Try out Puro.
Now moving out of the wheels, we're gonna start by pulling all the vines out of them, then spraying them off, applying Puro to the tires, and then iron remover to the rims. And with an assortment of brushes, we're able to get it off. And the one thing that we tried every single thing that we have in our arsenal to get off, that we could not get off these tires were these live vines. We still have the car. So if you guys have any tips for us to get them off, leave a comment below. We're still trying to figure it out. It's almost like they attached themselves to the rubber and became one with it, and we cannot remove them. And just for fun, I thought I'd show you a little test Mike and I were doing. We wanted to see how the cleaning would work with Puro on one spot and then just water on another, just to see how good the product actually is. And you can see that it was definitely necessary to use. I don't think I need to say much more because when we go over both spots, the dirt came off of where the Puro was used and it would not come off of where it wasn't. It was a pretty fun experiment and a lot of people always comment how we could clean these cars with only water and we wanted to see if that was true or false. Mike clearly sprayed one side of the dirt and then the other, and you definitely need a pre-rinse on a car like this, or any car really, but Puro works really good for stuff like this, and it's safe on your paint. Now for the back, like I said earlier, all this dirt's embedded in the paint, so what we're gonna do is apply more degreaser and then take microfiber mitts and really work it in and agitate it and then spray it all away and it's gonna get all of it out.
And finally, we're gonna hit the roof. And if you consistently watch our videos, you know we only do that because we don't wanna ruin the shots on the rest of the car. But if you don't consistently watch our videos, you should probably start now. And you can also subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos. Now into the engine bay with just a little bit of degreaser, watch how much this makes a difference. And now it's time to remove this rear decal with a razor and because it's wet it actually made it a lot easier to get off but normally you'd have to use heat to get it off because heat helps release the bond of the adhesive. All right, we're gonna pull the seats out of the car and then I have many, many surprises for you, Mike. I haven't seen in so. this car really yet besides the mess I can see here, but let me get this seat out of here and we'll explore. One thing that's very nice is these seats are lightweight and it protects our back. Cause you know what they say, you oh. lift with your back, not your legs. It protects your back. Don't listen to him. We have a lot of surprises for you, Mike. Yesterday, I had to go through a treacherous journey in order to get the, mm -hmm. the, the trunk to open. So I got you a new belt sander. I actually kind of need this. Yeah, it's a uh, black and wait, is it black and dagger? No, it doesn't matter. It's a skill classic, baby. This pretty cool American spirit. I know. Oh, yeah, I didn't no. open it. I didn't open so it. I didn't open it. Not open I it. didn't open it. You not open it. All right. Cool. This is the piece out of the stones. This is. I mean, <laughs> it's so tiny. It's pretty cute. What I really want to show you, Mike, is it looks like they were trying to replace the fuel pump on this car, which okay. I believe is is behind the back seat. Yeah, probably. Do you the want access is over there? Yeah. Do you want to see their incredible craftsmanship? Are you ready? <laughs> sure. Holy oh, shit! <laughs> no, man. This is just like okay. Chevy did this. Me and my buddy did a S10 once before. And Chevy doesn't put a relief port, so a lot of people don't want to drop it, and they just cut them up like this. This is incredible do you craftsmanship. Know, do you know who would do something like this? I don't know, dude. This no, is... you know who would do something like this. Who would do it? Right. Me. Did you do this? No, absolutely not. What do you thought, I was getting frisky last night? I don't know, myself? maybe you want to change the fuel pump. I would love to know. <laughs> Have any of you in the comments working on these like 80s, 90s Chevys ever just cut the body to do this? Because I've, I've seen this kind of thing before. It's ridiculous. I thought looking. you would really enjoy this. Dude, surprise. I love it. I, I'm yeah. so glad. I had no idea. He's like, there's a surprise. I was like, oh, okay, what are we gonna find here? That's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> I have a couple other things that 
I'm not sure we're gonna find yet because I haven't been in the car uh, this in depth yet. So mm -hmm. this mat is destroyed. We got a bunch of PCs parts and uh, look at this. Oh, Mike, look at this, brother. Is that bandana? Br no, no, it's not going on my head, man. I'll put a lot of nasty stuff on my head. This, this is saved. Uh, it looks individual. like they have taken hold of the old steering wheel. So the beautiful oh oh steer. my god! <laughs> I didn't even know that was back there. I hope nothing's in here. It feels really light. I don't know. Huh? That's gross. That's a really big one. That is a really big nest. Three. Door number one. Let's see. Is there anything door cool? Door one. Oh, boys. There's a picture of sheep. There's a lot of tools in this car. Yeah, including you and Mike. Oh, dude, stop. This. Brent, in the corner. Brent, every time Brent makes fun of us, he's going in the corner from yeah. now on. Your new nickname is Bully Brent. We're All right, I'm going. We're sick of Who is this, this guy? Barry Manilow? I don't know. Audio Slave. Oh, that's that's pretty sweet. Is it? Not gonna lie. I don't think that's I know Audio cool. Slave. You don't know Audio Slave? Do you guys like Audio Slave? I don't know Audio Slave. Dude, at you're all. about to get roasted. Audio Slave's huge. Most, what's the best Audio Slave song if you know Audio Slave and you like him? He's a big audiophile. I'm surprised you're not uh, familiar. I, I just there's a lot of music in the world, man. It oh. doesn't come with a glove box. You know, not a great design. The glove box is kind of nice. Box. Where are they gonna put your gloves? <laughs> Where do I put my gloves? All right. Well, there's a lot of garbage. I mean, there's a lot of valuable items that Mike's gonna reduce, reuse, and recycle, but we're gonna throw a lot of it away and uh, get to vacuuming. So let's go. This is unopened. Here. This is good stuff. Michael, here is our, this is our little okay. crate garbage can. Dude, that's not a garbage can. It's, Michael, sometimes you have to throw things out. It's okay. You just wanna, Pollute our earth, our mother earth, dude. Mike, do we need to talk about the rabbit rear hatch that you can't let go of? Dude, I could totally chop this off and make a sick belt. You know I can. Oh, this is gas and brake pedal, dude, for sure. Because th th this is the wide brake pedal and this is the gas pedal. I think someone on my nose. Dude, should we put this on your M2? <laughs> I think it would be sick. You ruin everything. Come on, brother. And now after we messed around for a while and got everything out of the car, it's time to finally vacuum it. And let me know if you want to see more of us doing this kind of stuff in the videos where it's more candid, or if you just want to see the normal type of videos where I cut a lot of that out. All right, so I'm here with the driver's seat of the car and I kind of noticed that there's some DIY action going on, similar to what we found in the back of the Camaro, but I haven't pulled this off yet. Just seeing a little bit of tape makes me think that this is gonna be uh, quite the sight to see. So we'll get this gross cover off here and see what this repair looks like. Wow. Ooh. Hi, and whenever you are repairing a seat, be sure to use duct tape, because <laughs> duct tape is good. <laughs> and also, I'm not sure when, I think is duct tape out of Ohio too? Duct tape. Yeah, duct is. tape, not duct, duck, like a duck, because this is duct tape. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is nice, let's peel back the layers Ooh. here. Ooh, man. This is some high tech work. Should we duct tape the, uh, the, fa know, the metal fabrication in there too? You know, oh, they did duct tape here too. <laughs> I didn't even see this last time. I think that guy, might have also done that as well. We threw away the duct tape, it was in the trunk. <laughs> I had it in my hand, dude. 
I had it in my hand. We threw away the culprit. What do Man. you Man. And all this. We tools. gotta fish it out so we can repair it uh, no, properly. No, we dumped it, dude. Rats. It's still in the trash can. You love can. jumping in the not, dumpster. It's raining tomorrow. outside. I'm not going to jump through this. <laughs> but we're going to get these seats cleaned up. So to clean the seats, first we're going to take these horrible seat covers off and you can see what they left on the seat beneath them. And we're going to use our Tornador, which is compressed air to blow that all away. And then the staining left over after that, we're going to use just a spritz of Puro and let it soak in and then use our extractor to suck it away. And that's it. And you can even see the red in the seats come back to life again. Again. And while we have the extractor out, let's get the carpet done in the same way with a little bit of extractor soap so everything can dry at the same time before the seats go back in the car. And for all the plastics and vinyls, all we need is some Puro and a magic eraser and we'll make it look as good as new. And back to the exterior, the first thing we're going to do is a two-step polish to bring back that depth and shine of the paint. Then we're going to use some 4 out steel wool and metal polish and bring these exhaust tips back to life because they do not look good. And the final things we do are dress the tires and put a ceramic sealant on the paint. But if you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe because we have some insane finds that we just found. You do not want to miss them because they're going to break the internet. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you next week.